Uh, so we're just getting set up here. We're from the Office of Study Abroad, and right now we have a laptop going around for you to sign in on. Um, we'd love for you to enter your information because this is how we connect with you and share uh, programs that would be relevant to you as first year students um, that are accepting applications and letting you know about uh, upcoming study abroad events that are happening. So please pass that around, and we'll just continue getting setting up uh, and uh, get started in a couple of minutes. So, thank you. Hi everyone, so we're going to fill you guys in on a little bit. My name is Sean. And I'm Alan. And we're both uh, seniors in the mechanical engineering program. And we just saw that you had a CSS person talking, so we'll tell you a little bit about mechanical engineering. Um, I'll start off. So, mechanical engineering is another STEM program. Um, the different industries that kind of fall under mechanical engineering is like aerospace, automobile, uh, manufacturing, HVAC. HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. Uh, like um, optimization of systems, control systems, uh, manufacturing. So if you like building things or like dealing with energy and heat flow, if you like cars, it's, it's kind of like the go-to major. Yeah, there's tons of uh, companies, especially around the Seattle area. Obviously, number one is Boeing for aerospace. Um, there's lots of other ones, uh, such as Systema Technologies. There's a, there's a genie, there's a huge long list. So if you're interested in into mechanical engineering, there's tons of jobs available on the market right now. Um, so our, our capstone, uh, the people who just were in here were talking about capstone. So my capstone project is uh, we're making three printed glasses. And so 3D printing, is, especially for mechanical engineer, is an industry that is just starting to take off right now. Uh, Boeing has started to do 3D printed uh, composite materials for all their aircraft. So as a mechanical engineer, my senior capstone project is basically 3D printing glasses. Um, and so just building those skills really helps as far as projecting me towards that career path. Yeah. Uh, my capstone is a lot about what the, the previous professor was talking about, about sensors and building a device. And the idea for mine is to build an array of sensors that gives you like awareness for things you can't see, like uh, kind of like in your car you have the camera that helps you back up in like parallel parking things like that. But it's for um, like scissor lifts and stuff like that. So they bump on things when on the ground, on the ground when they're you know sixty feet in there. Um, so for the actual application into the program, they only accept applications once per year. It's twice. Is it twice now? Yeah, just the fall and winter. Okay. Um, but yeah, the uh, the application pro process is really rigorous. Uh, for mechanical engineering, it's basically a five year degree crammed into four years. Um, so the amount of prerequisites is something like 13, which is insanely high. Um, you really have to talk with Charlotte, who is the mechanical engineering advisor, to really plan out what classes you want to take. If you don't have it figured out from the start, then you're going to be pretty far behind. So. All right, I think we're going to move into our game here. I'm sure you guys have seen the uh, First off, we're just going to quickly introduce ourselves. Thank you, too, for sharing. It's wonderful. These are awesome study abroad advisors. Uh, my name's Anna, and I work in the Office of um, Study Abroad and help out with uh, logistics for helping these programs run smoothly. Um, my name is Jennifer Mendoza. I'm a current um, student study abroad here at Vice. Okay, and so you may or may not have played this game before through our orientation session. Um, it's definitely different this time, so we have some new material for you, but it's a wonderful way to stay engaged in our presentation. Uh, please pull out your phone and uh, go to kahoot.it on your web browser, and then log in this game pin at the very top of the screen, you should be 382953, um, and please choose a name that is appropriate. Um, and uh, once we kind of get everyone logged in, we'll go ahead and launch the game. And it's really easy to play. Um, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Let us know if you have any questions getting the username or finding the Kahoot uh, game online. Okay, I know I have to take this 
welcome to Team Up. So if you don't want to use your phone for whatever reason, um, feel free to work with uh, your neighbor. Just a quick raise of hands. Who has heard of study abroad before? Who's interested in study abroad?
don't know where that is, you basically need one, you enter through the main door, and you see that big desk with the W, uh, so that's a um, welcome desk. To your left, you're going to find the services center, and you can, um, if you have a quick question regarding studying abroad, you can come and we can help you answer the question.
everyone here familiar with this credit? Yeah, no. Uh, everybody so, give a thumbs up if you are familiar, and give a thumbs down if you're not. I've seen it before. Okay. Um, so yes. Um, so when you, for example, the um, flyer that's going on around um, the classroom right now, um, whenever you run into a flyer around campus, uh, you can look at the description that I have, and usually it tells you the type of credits that you're going to be earning. Not all the products are the same. Some of the products are going to be offering uh, natural work credits. Some of them are going to be offering the LPA credits. Uh, but it depends on the program, um, all of the products are different. What is the what is one main concern UW students have about studying abroad? for our students, uh, but what often doesn't get talked about is that uh, if you receive financial aid, you can actually use that to pay for the program fee. Uh, there's also scholarships available to you. We have the use of scholarship that's integrated with the application process, and there's also the use of fossil scholarship, uh, which they are going to be talking a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I'll talk about that. So like I said, the first thing that I, I saw was like, oh, uh, Jared Flett mentioned the price. So for Japan, uh, the price that he spoke off the top of the head, he was like, oh, it's $4,000 and that covers everything. And I was just like, whoa, that is like way too much money. I, I don't even have enough money for that. But um, he mentioned all these different scholarships. And so there is the study abroad scholarship, which is being an ambassador like us. Uh, there's also the general scholarship from UW, there's the STEM scholarship. And then there's just general financial aid. So I went out and I just applied to like every single one of them. And I actually got, I actually ended up paying zero dollars for my study abroad trip because um, I got all these different scholarships. Um, so I was like, sweet, let's go. And I even, um, I even told the program when I was applying, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm working and I don't have enough money. If I don't get enough money, is, is it okay if I back down? And they were like, yes, that's perfectly fine. If you get accepted, and then you back now, they'll just pull something from the wait list. So you can still apply, wait for the scholarship funds to come in, and then if you really like don't get the money for it, you can back down, there's always people on the wait list. Um, what else am I missing? Uh, the main thing for the scholarship that we got is that they, they're uh, trying to pay for your ticket for transportation. Um, so whatever uh, the ticket costs, uh, they'll match the price if you get the scholarship. Yeah, that's a good recap of it. So, uh, as UW Bothell students specifically, we have a scholarship that can be awarded to you if you apply for our UW Bothell Study Abroad uh, Scholarship. And these two are ambassadors because they were awarded this scholarship. So, we have an ambassador program. You get to do fun things like this and present. And you're also awarded um, the idea behind the award is to offset the cost of your airfare. So, this is a huge, typically a huge amount of money. Um, in addition to the program fee, um, is your airfare expense. So we have this scholarship offered with the intent to offset that cost. Um, we have a question in the back. Um, if you're going to a place that speaks a different language and you're not really like, too keen on that language, are we going to have like, some representative or are we on like, our own? Uh, it depends on the program. Um, sometimes your faculty you need, if you want a faculty life program, will be able to uh, speak the language. Oftentimes TAs are brought on to help with that uh, specifically. Um, if you're, it depends on the program you go on. So if you sign up for a program that's an exchange program, which typically means you're the only one from the University of Washington attending classes in a different country, then those classes will most often be spoken in a different language. But more than likely, if you attend, uh, like if you do a faculty-led program, someone on your team or a couple people, like a couple different students will be able to speak the language. Um, just depends. Question? All right, so you mentioned the exchange having, uh, specifically having it taught in a different language. What I wanted to confirm was whether or not like, you're able to check if the courses taught are spoken in 
English or a different language, but probably won't be able to take any philosophy courses in a different language. So I was just wondering, um, wanting to know if most of the courses that are listed on the study abroad things are taught in English, where and you just you're on your own, you live in the in the area of the different language, or if it's taught in that language, and you should like, you take that into consideration when you do the courses. Uh, more often than not, they're taught in English. Yeah. Right, Just to add on oh, one okay. more thing, I, was, I forgot to mention this about the uh, scholarships. So for our group, there were about 14 of us who went, and nine of us got the study abroad scholarship, and that's only because nine of us applied to it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that every single person who applied to the study abroad scholarship got it. Applied um, for the scholarship, Just go for it. Yeah, Just go for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, smart. I 100% agree with that. We need more masters. study abroad, 
Um, it focuses a lot more on the kind of international community, sort of political, moral kind of motive behind the design of different systems uh, in different countries as well as in America. So that was just a, a big difference. I felt like I learned more in the four weeks uh, on the study abroad than I did in the entire year at UOB. You know? there, it's, you're really just getting into the culture and getting into the actual kind of community compared to just reading out of the textbook. You just learn a lot more and you soak it in a lot better. Um, Sorry? Oh, uh, yeah, so like going on the study abroad and you're going to another country, so it kind of changes your way of thinking. And so that really helps when you're like trying to problem solve and stuff like that. Like how can we do this and like, what's a better way or what's a different way? Because when you're just like here in America, we have that, you know, America-centered way of thinking. And study abroad really like helps you get away from that. Uh, on the career side of things, you know, anything that helps your uh, resume stand out is good. So uh, the couple times I've gone to like a career fair, all the, the recruiters are like, oh, you went on a study abroad, talk about that. And like, oh, what was it like going to another country? What did you learn there? So like, uh, it's always like a good like jumping off point for when you talk to recruiters and stuff like that. I second that. All right, we have one more question for you before we wrap up our presentation. All right, where is this image taken? <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate you listening to our presentation.